This is part two of Stephen Johnson's guide to short selling. Enjoy. You're 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 you're, you're doomed. So it, uh, it's nice. It's nice that it gives you a very clear stop out with that scenario that you talk about. If you're wrong, you're wrong. You move on. But in certain stocks, that you don't have that clear uh, stop out, which we'll get to in a moment. But but let's let's just skip on to the to the next part of the presentation. We've kind of gone on what are the dangers. And uh, next, we'll just quickly talk about uh, how can we kind of avoid the danger. So let me uh, bring that up one second. Okay, so we've kind of uh, addressed some of what the dangers are. Uh, I think we've been a bit agile. Actually, actually, and again, I didn't read your slide deck. Did we talk about being, <laughs> do, you have a, do you have a slide addressing being bought in? Nah, nah. So Okay, we need to talk about this because this is very yeah. important as well. You know, people love to look at charts that, that have failed, especially those momentum runners that have spiked and then they fade over multiple days. I mean, most of these stocks that we're looking at as, as day traders, as momentum traders, significant majority of them spike and fail repeatedly. They spike, they fail, they spike, they fail. So a common thing I will see with, with newer short sellers is they're like, well, I'll, I'll just short this stock and hold for days, for weeks. And that works frequently, but quite frequently as well, the danger is you can short this stock, you think I'll hold it for days and hold it for weeks, and you can get what's called a forced buy-in, where whether it be because of margin or whether it be because of borrow availability, your broker may just say, hey, we're taking you out of this short position. You borrowed these shares from us, they got called in and we're going to close your position. So this is a very common danger, especially stubborn shorts, guys and gals that short early and they think they can hold for days and weeks because they see these chart patterns repeating. The bummer is, and I've been there ugh, more times than I care to admit, where you can be right, but you'll get bought in the day before the big drop two days before the big drop and you have the right idea. You did all your research. The news is sketch. The company's a disaster. You go to Google maps. They're located in a mailboxes, et cetera. You're like, this is the greatest short ever, but then you get bought in before the crack. Have you ever had that happen in your short career? No, I mean, what I would say is there's, there's two really important things of, of what you address there. And, and there's two, there's two things that really, uh, I've come to a realization that have helped me as a short seller in, in the last even six months. The first thing is um, just never, ever short the first green day. Never, ever, ever short the first green day because obviously what you're addressing is uh, it's, it's up 30, 40, 50, 60%, 70%. It's got to come down. So I'll just, I'll just short and if it goes up another day or another day, then I'll just wait and then you get the forced buy-in. You, you just never short the first green day. Never, never, ever. I mean, like if it's really, really, if, if, if you've got a, a, a heavy crack and, and the lower high is, is like 50% from the high of the day and the crack, then maybe short the bounce and risk off high of day and short the fade. But otherwise, never, ever short the, short the first green day. Never. I totally, totally agree. And I, this is where I argue. <laughs> so, you know, this is where I get, get dragged into Twitter wars is, you know, you know <laughs> you, it drives me, you know, first of all, the morning of day one, if you're shorting, I mean, you're just, you're just significant majority of the time. You're just gambling. You're, you're a degenerate in my opinion. Now, if it's late day and this stock has been fading all day, you have a clear risk, say typically against the high of the day, that's different. But I mean, how many times, I mean, we had a, we had a 250% runner today at one point at 9:35 AM, that stock was only up 50%. It proceeded to go to like 250% plus on sketchy news. So, yeah, yeah I mean, if you're the, shorting oh. day one in the morning, whoo, good luck. Yeah, and, unless, unless the stock is what I would call blue, it's load early. So, like, for example, for me, I'll, I'll, I'll short gap and craps, and that's a completely different scenario. This is where a stock has gapped up 60 70%. It's already made its key move. It's already starting to lose momentum. And in the morning, it kind of has one final push and it fails. These are generally biotechs with no money. But if, if a stock has a clean chart, like a RKDA, 
uh, recently. If it's got a very clean chart and it's got no history, but all of a sudden it's running on massive volume and it's came out of nowhere, like you cannot show that stock. You are going to get torched on fire. Yeah, those are, that's the exact recipe we talk about. And, you know, those are, those are stocks we look for every day in Stocks to Trade Pro. Those, those big spikers that then hold through the day and then reclaim VWAP or reclaim the high. I mean, if you're too early on those, man, it's going to get ugly. I mean, as you know, like I've, I've tracked a lot of data. I've tracked a lot of, uh, I've tracked every percent gain out over the last, uh, since February. So February, March and April and May or whatever. And honestly, my, I was thinking I'm going to short stocks on the second day. My data shows that any, any stock on its second day generally runs red green and has another green day. Like, forget about not shorting stocks on the first day. You can't even short stocks on the second day. You, you need to wait till the third day, the fourth day in this market, or, or you're going to get burnt. Yeah, the, the, the so common, the, this is, and, and here's where I'm going to come in as, as, as the old guy. You know, we, we always used to talk about the, 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 the day three rule, the rule of three. So you would never short day one or two. And then typically on day three, these stocks would fail. But that's something I've talked about a lot. And you've heard me rant and rant and rant is that three day rule in 2016, 2017 is more like the five day, six day, seven day rule. I mean, Back in the day, it used to be day three. You're like, you look for the fading price, the fading momentum, and you hammer it. And you're right. When these things go red to green, they're putting in week-long, you know, five, six trading day moves. Uh, one sec. I'm just going to restart my audio because it's just cut off. One sec. Oh, Stephen. How you came and you stayed without taking, but I sent you away. Oh, Mandy, I'm still going to fire and I'm lonely. All right, it's safe. One sec. It's taken ages. And yeah, that, so, we'll... uh, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing we talk about is it's funny, you know, that these things just put in multi, multi, multi-day moves. So it's like that day three rule is more like the day five, six, seven day rule. So you can be patient. You got to be that sniper. You got to wait. There's those opportunities. But day one, big volume, big chart. You got to be very careful. Okay, so now that we've kind of talked about what the dangers are, I just want to have, and not spend too much time on this section, but kind of, one, two, three rules to just kind of avoid the dangers. So we've, we've looked at the dangers. We've got Austin Powers. He likes to live dangerously. I like to live dangerously. But uh, next section is how do we avoid the danger? So, I mean, do you have a couple of rules? And I'll give a couple of rules. Uh, maybe I can start. The main rule that I use to avoid the dangers is I don't short stocks on the first green day unless they're up like 60, 70, 80% without any key support levels below. Uh, the second rule that I would give is that um, I generally, when I think I'm, <laughs> I'm close, and you'll say, I know what one rule you'll say immediately, but I'll, I'll let you have it. The other rule is when I'm in danger of a squeeze, or when I think I'm in danger of a squeeze, I will have my uh, finger full size, full position on the cover button. So these are my two rules. What, what would you see your two rules were to protect yourself in a short market? Um, the biggest rule. In, in and I know what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm interrupting you. I'm sorry. So you're, you're speculating on my answer, but I'm not sure if you're going to get it right. But my, my number one rule is, especially don't, right now, don't do short low not floats. short low floats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Damn it. I, I was I hoping you were guessing something <laughs> out. No, no, because you've told us a lot of times in pro sessions, don't short <laughs> CSAN. It's a 500,000 low float. So that is, you know, especially what I would call micro floats because right now, you know, in the standard day trader world, anything with a float less than 10 million, which the float we've talked about a few times, that's the freely tradable shares. That's basically the inventory of stock. That's the best way to put it. But if you're talking about a less than 10 million or especially like a, we, we had a couple this week, last week, 500,000 shares, 300,000 shares of freely tradable stock that traded like 18, 19 million shares in a day. This could probably warrant, we should probably just do a low float episode at some point, but just yeah. 
if you've had a big, I, I know Steven hasn't because, you know, he didn't graduate elementary school, but if you've had any sort of, of economics class, and I don't care if it is like middle school economics, you understand the Adam Smith, which I've got his book, Wealth of Nations right over there. You understand the, the, the idea of supply and demand. And think about if you had 300,000 of anything, but a demand for 18 million of it, what would happen to the price? I don't care if it's fake deer heads, sweatshirts, or iPhones. If you only got 300,000 of them and there's 18 million demand, what's going to happen to the price? You're going to get squeezed like it's Johnson's Lemonade stand from season one going out of control in Florida on a hot sunny day. <laughs> that's, that's basically what's going to happen. So yeah, my number one rule, especially if you are new. Now, you'll see some of the, some of the pros. You know, we, 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 we have an upcoming episode, or it may have been in the past. I can't remember the exact order, but with Phil Ozark Trades, Phil Godeker. He shorts a lot of low flows, but he's got 15 years of experience. He's got a huge account. It's a completely different scenario for him doing it versus a new or intermediate trader. So I say, if you're new or intermediate, anything less than 10 million, anything less than 5 million float, please just let them do their thing or look to go long them. You don't have to trade every big, short every big runner. Let the low floaters go, please. Oh, man. And I understand that. And I think that's fair play, but I think, I think we've, well, well I mean, I think, you know, you know, for, for you, I mean, how often do you short low floaters? I mean, I mean, you don't partake, I mean, you don't target them, do you? I don't, I don't target low floats, but I, I, the thing, the thing is with trading is you never really get the setup that you want very often. Uh, you have to wait a long time to get the right setup. And sometimes you've got to compromise your setup a little bit uh, to make a trade to make money. And if you compromise your setup too much, you lose money. Like this is how trading works. So sometimes I compromise it a little bit and I'll be like, I will take this low float, but I'll take it uh, maybe less size and I'll have my finger on the cover button and I'll be waiting to squeeze. And sometimes you get faked out. That's the trouble with low floats. You get faked out because you think, well, if it does happen, I need to protect myself. Uh, so, but I do, I do honestly uh, short low floats. I don't go a huge size on them and I'll have my finger on the cover button. But, but it, I mean, for me, it depends though because stocks with 100 million float even if they've only got 20 million volume, they still can squeeze. It just depends on who's trading it, how many shares are locked up. Yeah, I think the, the one caveat I would add to that is the likelihood of a 500,000 yeah. floater making those, you know, I call it, you know, the, the, the multiple moves in one day are much. <laughs> My guitar just fell over. <laughs> We'll take that out in the blooper reel. Um, but the, the <laughs> likelihood of a low floater having those multi intraday spikes are much higher than say some 200 million float biotech. Yeah, those are the uh, ones that typically get one spike and either they fade or maybe they go sideways. And, and in reality, that's what we're playing. We're playing probabilities. You're playing what is the best probable situation for me to make money right now. And showing a low float is less than your probability. So it all makes sense. And hopefully you're enjoying this episode as a listener. But if you're listening, you're probably somewhat unfamiliar or new to short selling. And that's why I'm begging you to, you know, Steven's been doing it for a year. That's a big difference than if you're just discovering shorting. Yeah, and, and, I, and I've, I've been squeezed a lot of times and I've, and I've took some <laughs> big losses, shorting stocks as well. But, the, but do you know what it is? It's as long as you do it less, like when I first started shorting, I thought I could get away with murder and I would be down a grand, down 1500 at least once a week. But as long as I made 200 or 300 coming out, I'd be like, well, whatever, it's working. Now, now I'll, if I'm down over a grand at any time, I'm like, shit, this is really bad. You, you've got to learn discipline if you're shorting. Yeah, that, that's, that's the, again, uh, that's the crux. Yeah, one, and, and that's one thing that, that I, you know, it, you get saved a lot shorting yeah. these stocks and it creates very bad habits because remember, no one gain is going to make your career, but one loss can end your career. So if you've got a $30,000 account and, and, and you lose a hundred grand on some short, I mean, 
that's going to change your life. That's going to change your trading. So, but the problem is the double-edged sword is you can get squeezed and you're down a couple grand, the stock drops and you make a hundred bucks and you're like, yeah, you know, I made a hundred bucks, but your risk to reward was so terrible. And if you get that habit, you know, the one that comes along, the KBIO, the dries, the Elfin, the RKDA, and, and it's all over. But you can kind of get trained to make that poor risk reward, unfortunately. No, no, you can't. And, and that definitely happened to me. I, I was going a grand down, a grand down, a grand down, and making a couple of hundred each time. And then one day you go five grand down, and you're like, right, I can't do this anymore. Like, you, you have to stop. And now I'll let myself go 200 down, 200 down, 200 down. And then worst case scenario, I'll go grand down and it's a horrific loss. But at least the horrific loss is a grand, not five grand, because you've got that better level of discipline. See, and that's a great tip. Um, I'll, I'll actually compliment you this episode. I mm-hmm. like, especially as a, you know, as a new trader, have that dollar amount where you're like, I am done. Specifically, this is specifically on the short side. Because I'm sure you'll agree with me. Typically, when you're wrong, it never gets better. So if <laughs> you know, if you short that first day on a low floater and you hit your two hundred dollar and you and you start justifying, you start researching, yeah. you start reading the yeah. SEC filings, you start going to Google Maps, you start doing all these things. It's a Price great up. thing about shorting. Normally when you're wrong, you're you're, you're wrong. And, and so that, that max dollar loss, I think is a great tip because that's what keeps a $200 loss from a 400 or a $4,000 loss. Yeah. And if it's just grinding and you're waiting for every pullback to be that big crack that never comes, just, just get out. It's, it's, it's way harder. It's way harder oh, in the moment. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know how many times, man, I've <laughs> stared at a stock for six hours because, yeah, hoping. you know, hoping, you know, or, or even if it's, you know, it's just holding view app, you know, it's still kind of going nowhere. And then you ruin your day. You miss other opportunities because now you're focused because you're short 5,000 shares of this runner. You can't walk away. You can't eat. You can barely go to the bathroom. And now you can't catch anything else that's happening through the day. Then when they grind and grind, they almost always end up spiking late day. They stop you out. You wasted six hours. You're dead tired and you missed three other trades. So the beauty of that stop is it's like, okay, this thing ain't working. Let's move on. And I can make up my couple hundred bucks or whatever that number is in other trades later in the day. I mean, or you get squeezed out of the blue all of a sudden, and I don't know what's worse, the steady grind or the total squeeze. I don't know what's worse. So basically, be very careful. To me, I, to me, I would rather just get smoked out of the trade than sit there and stare at it for six hours. You know, it's like, at least then I can run my scans. I can look for other stuff. I can do other things. But yeah, the grinders, oh, it's like, it's like having your hand in a grinder. Okay, uh, we've talked a lot about the negatives. Let's let's jump across to the positives. We'll quickly go over this, and then we'll we'll jump onto some uh, some chart patterns just to just to close this out. But uh, I mean, I think it, the the structure of this uh, this podcast has been pretty fair. Short selling is extraordinarily dangerous. You need to to heed the warnings before you jump in, and and for that, we've Tim and I. I guess more Tim has been more responsible. I'm a little bit more wild, and I'll probably get burned for it a few more times. Uh, but let's let's go into the advantages. So, I mean, what are the advantages? One, and um, second of all, how can we capitalize on these advantages as well? And Tim, since you've you, you've you've given the warning, so I think it's fair to give some of the pros as well. Yeah. So the well, the the greatest thing about shorting is the fact that these chart patterns repeat, repeat repeat over and over and over again. And you can look at, you know, Stephen's going to add some charts. I mean, the beauty of these stocks is they, they, we, we have these sketchy stocks that we look for and they, they frequently repeat the same moves over and over and over again. So if you've familiar with them, you know, the chart setup, 
you can have a very, very, very high risk or, or, or very high success rate because his, you know, I talked about it in season one. I think history doesn't repeat, but it rhymes, as Mark Twain says. And you can just look for this chart and you can see, oh, this thing spiked and failed six months ago. It spiked and failed a year ago. So you can, if you can be patient and wait for the setups, your success rate can be 70, 80% of these if you're patient and you wait. And the second great thing is the big gains in a short amount of time. I mean, if you're looking at Steven's preferred setup of some sketchy biotech up 80%, you could make 20, 30% in minutes and be out of the trade. Those, in my opinion, are the two biggest advantages. One, they're, I hate to, I, I, I hate to use the word easy, but they're they're easier to spot and yeah. the, the, the gains are quick and liquid. You can just get in and out. Yeah, no, I mean, for me, the two things that I would say is, I mean, one, the trade comes to you a lot more and, and that's a different variation of what you've just said. Uh, you're, you're looking at a stock and you, you're not looking for the needle in the haystack. You're not searching the top percent gain. I was thinking, which one's going to pop next? You're literally looking at the stock for three days and this has got to come down. Like Phil said, I'm going to take paper cuts on the way up, one of the best quotes I've ever heard. And when it comes down, I'll catch it and I'll, sh- or I'll, I'll wait for it to crack and I'll short the lower high. Uh, there's a lot more time for you to make a, an educated decision on the short side. But if you don't make an educated decision, you, you can be on fire on the way up. So th- there's, two, there's two sides to the coin. Uh, the other sign is, um, and I don't know if this is biased, but 90% of traders lose, 90% of traders are on the long side. It kind of feels like when you're on the short side, you've got this little edge that no one else has got because most people don't have the accounts to short. I, I don't know if that's me being a bit biased or a bit naive. You know trading better than I do. But I think that that was, it's a good point. I think that was way more true in the past. Uh, back when I was getting started, 2008, 2009, 2007, um, it was way you know, there were so many fewer short sellers. It was so much harder to get borrows. I think that's flipped a little bit in the last couple of years and not ironically, I think that that's a big reason that we get these multi-day squeezes is because it is a lot easier for Joe Blow or Jane, Jane Doe to short these days. Uh, yeah, but I mean, for me, it's just, it's a lot more natural short the first red day uh, it's gone up three days you're waiting for the red day when you're looking for a volatile stock i mean again on rkda when you see a chart that clean and you see that breakout volume you just literally buy and dip so on the long side i can understand how you can you can have gimme long setups as well uh, but but on the flip side on shorts you never get borrows for half the things that you want that's one of the things we might not have addressed you never get borrows for what you want yeah, that, that is actually a great point because even with the best brokers sometimes, and, and keep this in mind, this is a tip. If you're looking to short sell, make sure before you waste hours, minutes, or days watching a stock, make sure that you can actually obtain a borrow and actually short it. Again, I've been there many a times because lots of times the availability will change during the day. It is very frustrating to spend hours getting ready, getting ready, and then you hit that short button and the broker's like, nope, you know, no borrows. Or, or it just goes, your order goes queued and never fills. So make sure you're familiar with the process with your broker. You know how to obtain those shares and you verify you can actually get them before you spend that time. Okay, so I mean, maybe just to, just to finish up, so we've, we've talked about the 250 rule, which I'll, I will never forget now. Uh, we've talked about the, the hazards of, of shorting. We've talked about some of the benefits of shorting. We've, we've kind of defined what shorting is. And now what I'd like to do is, is maybe I will show you some of my shorting patterns. You can see if you like them, if you don't like them. I already know your classic shorting pattern, that, that late afternoon fade. Um, but I, I will run you through some of mine. We'll, we'll, we'll show the audience uh, some of mine and... And you can basically see what you like about them and what you don't like about them. Sure. So first off. Uh, and keep this- in mind, if you are, we're, we will, uh, one way or another, we'll get these slides on. So if you're listening on iTunes, 
just remember you can jump over to steadytrade.com, go to the episode and we'll drop these in, or you can go to YouTube as well. So. Okay. So for me, when I'm looking at, uh, I'll just go back one, CAPR, uh, this chart is, it's an overall downtrending chart. It's gone from the fours to the two. So it's depreciated in value. And, and maybe I'm just looking at this on stocks to trade. And just the last year, it's depreciated in value in the last year. And we can see that every time it kind of gaps up, it has this big red day. We, we can see that where I'm putting on the mouse here. And if you, and, what we're looking at is, is CAPR is the ticker. And we're looking at the one year, one day chart, which is kind of, I talk about the long-term chart or the daily chart in Stocks to Trade Pro. Typically, we're looking at a one-year chart. Now, we will go out a little further, but the first place you go is the one-year chart. And, and I mean, what's really interesting is when it spikes with volume, it doesn't gap up. But when it gaps up beforehand, it, it, always, it always craps back down. So generally, it will have volume. It will come out of nowhere and spike, or it will gap up big and it will always come down. Generally, when I say gap downs like this, and I, th I think I know with CAPR, they've always got an offering and an, uh, an offering is uh, the selling shares to dilute the float um, to raise money for the company, probably because it's a, it's a biotech, yeah, it's, it's a therapeutics company. So th this is the, the standard kind of chart that I look to short. And, and it's sad because I think a lot of people see stocks gapping up and they think gap and go, gap and go, gap and go. You have to look at the one year chart and think, look at the history of this chart. Look at how many times it fails when it gaps up. You know, I know we, we argue a lot about the whole bull versus bear thing, but I mean, you know me, if I saw this chart, the first thing, you know, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I was, I was about to do the black, but yeah, I mean, you know that, and, and that's what I totally agree. I mean, if I saw this one year chart and somebody's like, would you go along this? I'd be like, no way. This thing's disgusting. And not so. But, but I mean, I think it's very easy to think, okay, I mean, history doesn't repeat, but it rhymes. It's probably going to gap down. But the, the, the question is on the short side, where would your entry be? So that's where I've pulled in the, the entry day. And, and that's where the difficulty is because it, it, it looks very bullish when you look at it pre-market here. Uh, from seven till eight till nine on the day that it did have this big uh, crap down, it was extremely bullish till 9.30 when the bell rang. So, I mean, do you see an entry there or? You know, I guess my, the, 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 the safe, <laughs> to me, the safe entry would be in the two twenties with risk against the high of the day. Um, you know, because then it's breaking that pre-market kind of support area and you've got clear risk to reward. Now I'm not in love with it because there's, there, I, I, there's only so much meat on the bone on, on, on this stock, but I think you break that 220, 219 area, that's your entry, and then you risk high a day, which is 240. And, you know. Yeah, it's a tough one because you're short in weakness, though. I mean, for, for me, I, I would be shorting it on the way up, completely based on the fact that it fails every time it gaps up. I mean, every single time it's gapped up, it's failed. But uh, so, so you're, you're iffy on this. What, 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 would you, what would you grade this setup? Well, the only, basically just because of the fact that there's only so much meat on the bone, um, yeah. cause the stock ultimately goes back to resistance in the one seventies, the one eighties. And yeah, that's a, you know, you're making 20, 30, 40 cents a share, but I just look at it. It's gapping up to two twenty five. supports at one eighty. I, I, I don't look to short biotechs that I can make 30, 40 cents a share on a perfect trade. Yeah, no, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, this is one example. I mean, this was the kind of gap and crap setup that I normally look at. Another kind of setup that uh, I would look at as a short setup is a, a kind of an overextended gap down. And I, I don't know what you would think about this, but generally we'd all see you never short the first green day and you don't short the first green day, uh, but you would short the first kind of red day when it's made a huge move out of nowhere with the, this crazy kind of volume. And especially the, you know, the, what the stock we're looking at is S E E D seed. One of the sketchiest stock. I mean, this stock has been sketchy for since I started. So the, there's usefulness in, in, in building a bias. And yeah, I mean, anytime I see seed jump, it's always on short watch, sketchy, sketchy stuff. Yeah, and, and it, even if you look back at the one-year history, it, it went green, then red, then green, then red. Then it had a couple of green days, small green days, then it went red. And that's had a big green day, then you can expect a red day. Uh, sometimes, if it gaps up, it will, you can expect that it might go to the, the 250s, the threes, though, because all of, this, all of the shorts will be torched. Do you think, or 
that's my opinion. Well, in, in this, I, I, I agree chart wise, but in the instance of seed, I mean, it's a high float stock. It's a, everybody knows the history. There's so many bag holders that have believed this thing. I mean, yeah, I, I agree with you chart wise, but seed is a perennial short in my opinion. Yeah. And, and for me, my entry, I wouldn't have got it. Yeah. I would have shorted into the resistance. I would have shorted into where it closed uh, the day before. And if I didn't get that, I, I might not have took it. Uh, what, what about you? How would you take this? You know, I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't short in after hours the day that jumped up. I'm assuming there was probably uh, news. And I mean, when we talk about rules, I mean, shorting in after hours, very, very, very dangerous. Uh, and then, I you know, I, I come in the next morning and it's gapping down. I would probably just consider this a miss in my opinion. So, uh, yeah. I mean, for me, if it spiked up to where it closed, I think, or if it, if it was struggling red green, I, I would think about taking it because it is overextended. It is, it is a really shitty stock. Uh, but let's go on to the next one. But we are convincing you to take shorts. The, the no, no, I get, well, well, yeah, and, and I agree. It was seed. If, if, it, if it spiked to that after hours level and then started to fade a little bit, but that's you know, a to me, then, yeah. it, 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 I come in, you know, I come in the next morning and it's already gapping down and I'm like, eh, you know, so yeah, you've, you've missed the meat of the move. Yeah. Fair enough. And, and this is one of my favorite setups that I've uh, just started tracking recently. Uh, and it's more for the psychology of, of, of traders. So generally when you've got a stock uh, putting updates, updates, updates like NIHD, but then all of a sudden it kind of gets ahead of itself. And it really gaps up big. And it's not just gapping up a bit. It's gapping up like 10, 15, 20%. And then all of a sudden on the first sign of weakness, everyone's running to the exits thinking I'm going to take my profits from the day before when I gapped it. And uh, yeah, looking, we, looking at this chart, go, go back real quick. So this is NIHD and we're looking at the one year chart again. I mean, you have to, as a short seller, remember you want people to sell the stock. You want people to push the price down by, I selling brings prices, buying brings higher prices. But I mean, think about yourself. This stock was actually, this is a six month chart. So six months ago, the stock was 25 cents. And then, in, you know, it's ground up higher, higher, higher. And then in three days, it's gone from 60 cents to $1.50. If you were in this stock, think about the other side of the trade. If you were a long, if you were a bull, I don't care how bullish you were, you're telling me you're not going to sell with a 300% gain, a hundred percent gain. That's why I, I love your idea on this one. Yeah, no, this is something I've more recently been tracking and I've seen it over and over and over when, when the bulls just get a little bit too excited, they ramp the price just a little bit up too much. Then the morning push happens. Uh, as soon as you get that lower high, you can risk off the high of day. I mean, if we just look at the end of the day. Yeah, I love, yeah, flip, flipped it there. I mean, that I love that i mean especially um you know you're kind of you, your arrow is a little early but but i i like that 945 area where there it's set a top now doesn't mean the stock can't re-break out but the beauty yeah. of it is you have a clear stop because you know if it breaks the high of day you're crazy to stay short yeah so you've got, you've got a very nice i mean this is pre-market i think a little bit yeah so I mean, yep. before the market open so it's not ideal but i mean it's probably the best short of the of the three of them so i would say hasta luego don't blow up <laughs> can you see this don't blow up don't touch yourself on fire um, and hey. go on i'll let you speak no 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 and so yeah i think you know the biggest thing that we want you to take away from this is, you know, have a good understanding of, of what the potential is. Well, actually, let me rephrase that. Everybody sees the potential. So everybody sees, oh, this stock dropped 50%. I could make big money shorting. Make sure you have a firm understanding, a grasp of the risks, what can happen, know the float, know the past history of the stock, Make sure you can pick out support and resistance. That's why I say, and this is where we will have future debates, I say you need to learn to go long first. You need to learn the mechanics of a trade. You need to be able to recognize chart patterns, and that takes time. And then once you start seeing 
those support and resistance levels clearer, that's when you can take the next step. But if you're looking at a chart and you're like, man, I don't need, I can't really determine a risk to reward or a blue sky chart or a chart at resistance, take your time, make sure you understand the risks because especially in 2016, 2017, 2018, it used to be, you could say this stock is up too much, but it's a, uh, it's a dangerous world to say this stock is up too much right now, especially in low floats. Yeah. And, and I, I don't think I will ever debate you. I don't think I'll ever argue with, argue with you with that point. I think you have to go long before you go short. You have to learn the patterns first on the long And side. you need to learn how to stop out. I mean, you can lose a boatload of money going long too. You can lose it all going long, but the, you need to get the mechanics in the, in the discipline to say, this is my plan. This is where I'll stop out. And at least with the long, I mean, a lot of these stocks, you know, at least you can get an exit. You don't end up in a dries that goes from $4 to 120 in four days or whatever it was. But yeah, but, but even when you go short, it's a horrendous learning experience all over again. Like you, you need to learn everything all over again. You need to, cause it's a whole different ball game. Things move differently. Things react differently. Uh, it's, it's, upside down psychology it's a whole other ball game so you have to start small and be careful in the very beginning and we'll leave on this the number one rule is you have to be okay with being wrong there's you know just right. because just because you took a stop it is not a bad trade if you do all your due diligence you look at the chart you 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 did everything the right way Sometimes these stocks just run and you need to be okay with being wrong. And if it's that $100 number, that $200 number, 500,000, whatever, depending on your account, your stop is, you have to be okay with being wrong. If you start justifying, if you start getting stubborn, hoping it only gets worse. It's a lot like Steven's body hair. I mean, if you don't address it, it only gets worse and worse and worse. And I've been single for two years now and no one wants to be single for two years. No, but it, it's very, very true. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. There's nothing worth adding. It's, it's... So cool. thank you again for listening to the Steady Trade Podcast. We'll talk about shorting many, many more times in the future. I still think, you know, oddly enough, the, the Dow is down 500 points today. Maybe, maybe we'll get a little more short friendly market. I, I talk about short friendly markets. When I got started 2007, 2008, I mean, we had down 500 point days on the regular. So, but on that note, remember, visit steadytrade.com, hit the submit your audio uh, link. We would love to hear your questions in audio form. Or you can also just email us um, at steadytrade.com and send us your questions. Maybe we missed something you want us to discuss today. Maybe you want us to elaborate on something. We want to be useful to the listeners. So please submit that feedback, comment on YouTube, comment on steadytrade.com, and we appreciate you listening. Hi, this is Jeremy from Zimbabwe, Africa, uh, currently living in Texas, and I like to clean the house. I actually don't. My wife's just in the room next to me, but uh, brownie points, you know what I mean? Well, listening to Stephen and Tim on the Steady Trade Podcast. Uh, you can register to win real, actual prizes at their website, steadytrade.com. And if you really like what you hear, give the podcast a five-star rating and write a glowing review on iTunes like I did. And this is how we say goodbye in Zimbabwe. <laughs>